also on a personal level, this is, we use the word disruption. It's such a clinical antiseptic word. It's a period of disruption. Life is turned upside down. It's just turned upside down. Remember those snow globes when you were a kid and you, you shook the globe and the snow went all over and the whole picture changed uh, as soon as you picked up and shook that snow globe. Uh, somebody picked up our country and just shook it and turned it upside down and it's all chaotic and things are flying all over and there's new information and there's mixed information and people don't know what to do and businesses are closing and the rules change every minute and can I go out, can I not go out, how do I get the virus, how do I not get the virus. Uh, and now I'm at home and I'm stuck at home and the kids are at home. And then there's a whole component to this don't touch anyone, don't hug, don't kiss. We're human beings. That interaction is so important to us. That emotional affirmation is so important to us. And now you have all these weighty decisions. Should I go out? Should I not go out? Is this safe for my kids? Is this not safe for my kids? I'm stuck in my, my house. I've used my experience just as a, a metaphor to communicate and relate. Having the kids in the house. Sounds great, having the kids in the house. Yay, the kids are in the house. I remember when my kids were young, I was divorced. My kids were three girls. Uh, they were six, six and seven and eight years old six and seven and eight years old in a small apartment in Manhattan. Uh, that's a lot of fun. And then that gets old very fast, right? The claustrophobia just sets in. Sets in for the kids, would set in for me. What I would do then is I would go to my mother and father's apartment, which was also in Manhattan, because it was to get out of my apartment. And I would go to my mother and father's apartment. They had a little apartment in Manhattan. And my mother was magic with the girls. And she would play with them. And she could play with them all day, my mother. My mother's pure sugar. She's just pure love, my mother. Uh, but I'd be there for a couple of hours. And I'd be sitting there with my father. We'd sit on the couch and we'd watch a ball game. And after a couple of hours, now the kids are running around and the kids are picking up this and they're picking up this and they're picking up his picture frame. And, they're put, and my friend said, put that down, put that down, don't touch that, don't touch this. After a couple of hours, my father would say, I think you have to go to work now, pal. <laughs> and I would say, no, dad, I don't, I don't have to go to work. <laughs> no, no, I think you have to go to work now, pal. <laughs> you know, uh, having all the kids in that tight environment, that's very stressful. Uh, that's why yesterday we said all the fees on all the parks are waived. Get out of the house. Go to a state park. We have beautiful state parks. By the way, traffic is down. Put the kids in a car. Go to a state park. Go to a county park. Go to city park. Shirley Chisholm Park in Brooklyn is beautiful. It's open. It's air. The weather's getting better. Spend the time with the kids. Uh, there's also tension among families. I mentioned uh, my mother who is uh, numerically a senior citizen, although not uh, in, in her reality. Uh, I wanted her to stay home. I want her to be isolated. She's my mom. I want her protected. One of my siblings said, I want to take mom to my house, and we're going to have a party at my house, and I want her to see the kids, etc. I said, that's a mistake. You shouldn't do that. You should let mom stay home. I'm more protective. The sibling was saying, I want to take mom. She wants to get out of the apartment, exposed to the kids. I said, you don't know. All you need is one kid all day long. All I hear about is somebody coming up to me saying, I didn't know, but my daughter was with this person, blah, blah, blah. So I can even see the tensions in the families. Uh, and that's real, too. And people should expect that. 
Uh, and lastly, there is something to this lack of ability to connect. Don't hug, don't kiss, stay six feet away. We are emotional beings. And it is important for us, especially at times of fear, times of stress, to feel connected to someone, to feel comforted by someone. Uh, I mentioned my daughter. I haven't seen my daughter in over two weeks. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And then this concept of maybe I can't get next to her because of this virus. There's a distance between me and my daughter because of this virus. It, it saddens me to the core, and it frightens me to the core. Uh, and I had her on the phone this morning, and I said it to her. I just, I just said it to her. I said, I can't tell you how hard this is for me not to be able to be with you not to be able to hold you in my arms, not to be able to kiss you all over your face, which she hates anyway. But, uh, and that plays out a thousand different ways. You put all this together, it's a hard time. It is a hard time on every level. It is a frightening time on every level. At the same time, it is this much time. It is this much time. Is it three months? Is it six months? Is it nine months? I don't know, but it's this much time. We will get through this much time. Understand what we're dealing with. Understand the pressures that we're feeling. But we will get through this much time. Be a little bit more sensitive. Understand the stress, understand the fear, be a little bit more loving, a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more comforting, a little bit more cooperative, and we will get through this time. 